Today is Thursday, November the 3rd, 2022. Let me read this text we've been using all week as we're talking about blessing and how we as followers of Christ are to be people of blessing. Numbers 6, 22 through 27, the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how are you to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you or lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they'll put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. We're to pronounce blessing over all of Israel, true Israel today. Just like Aaron the priest was commanded to do in the Old Testament. The blessing will not come upon them unless they are obedient. In other words, it'll pass over them, but we're still to pronounce the blessing. It's neither our position to condemn them nor to issue sentence upon them. It's the right of the church to judge spiritual doctrine and leadership and to separate ourselves from people who claim to be Christian but live like the devil or live contrary to the teaching of the word of God. But just as Jesus did not condemn them, neither are we. Remember who God told Aaron to pronounce the blessing over? The children of Israel every day. Do you know what these people were like? <laughs> they did every imaginable sin. <laughs> Known to mankind, they did it. They broke every command of God. Yet God made sure they were blessed in order to allow his blessing to fall upon those who were obedient. When we bless others sincerely, even when they don't deserve it, it has the potential to work conviction in their life. <laughs> it's, it's kind of explained that way in, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 20, and it says this, therefore, if your enemy hung, hungers, Feed him. If he thirsts, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire upon his head. What does it mean to heap coals of fire upon one's head? Well, it may refer to an Egyptian tradition of carrying a pan of burning charcoal on one's head as a public act of repentance. By referring to this proverb, Paul was saying that we should treat our enemies with kindness so that they will become ashamed and turn from their sin. See, the entire teaching of the word of God encompasses this attitude of blessing. God, God doesn't want to punish us. He wants to bless us. But he will punish us because he's a just God if we don't turn from our evil ways. We weren't brought here to curse. We were brought here to bless. So in Luke chapter 10, verse 5 and 6, it says, These very words... But whatsoever house you enter, first say, peace be upon this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. It's that simple. I want you to hear this out of Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 38 in the Message Bible. Now, no, this is a paraphrase, but it, it, it sums up what we're trying to say here. To you who are ready for the truth, I say this. Love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with energies of prayer for that person. Someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, gift wrap your best coat, make a present of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff. Live generously. Here's a simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you. Then grab the initiative and do it for them. If you only love the lovable, do you expect a pat on the back? Run of the mill sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, do you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give for what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest of pawnbrokers does that. I tell you, love your enemies, help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives toward us, generously and graciously, even when we're at our worst. Our Father is kind, you be kind. 
Don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Don't condemn those who are down. That harshness can boomerang. Be easy on people. You'll find life a lot easier. Give away your life. You'll find life given back, but not merely given back. Given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way generosity begets generosity. Wow. You see, you may not remember this verse, but I promise you it's in the Bible. You can look it up as you should always be making sure I'm reading out of the scripture. In Acts chapter 3, verse 26, the whole work of Christ can be summed up by this statement, and I quote, God has sent him to bless you. That's what God's been about. That's what we're to be about. I challenge you today, think about your conversation and your behavior, and then take it to heart that as a priest before the living God, it's a joy for you to be what God is to all of us, a blessing. Let's be that to others. Father, I need help. I think most of us need help. And we already have the help in the indwelling Holy Spirit to be the kind of people that bless. Oh, let us be about your business. Reconciling men to God through the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, forgive us where we've fallen short and we've used our words to destroy. Help us to have our conversation filled with blessing toward all men. In the name of Jesus, amen. Have a great day today. You've been blessed. Now let's go be a blessing.